Hi, my name is Lauren Martin. I'm Brett's daughter. Brett is out of town this week and he asked me to read something to you all. He asked me to read an email he received this week to all of you. It's a true story about a woman's life. I wasn't raised like other girls. I was raised like my brothers by my military father. I was so close to him. I'm his little girl and the one who he trusts the most. Every time before he goes to work, I used to fix his badges on his military uniform. He taught me how to load a gun and how to use it when I was seven years old. So I was raised like a tough girl in a military base where I can hear the guerrilla troops chant in the morning and tornado F-14 fighters flying, keeping the sky noisy all the time. So I was the fearsome tough girl known like that amongst my friends and members of my family. My mom used to say that I have a heart made of stone for I was emotionless, a hard girl who sometimes ended up fighting with my older brothers. I finished my high school and I went to the university and graduated, then worked in a military hospital for a year, but then quit and went for education as a teacher. I was assigned to work in a high school located in the desert. I had to travel daily through a desert road and do my job, then come back. But my family saw that I could do it because I was the crazy tough girl after all. But something really happened that did something to me and made me someone who I've never thought I would end up to be. A few years ago, when the war started in South Lebanon, the last attack, I was at the summer house with my family. All of us were there, my nephew, my parents, my sisters and brothers. One of my friends happened to be there in Lebanon with her family when the war started, so I was following the news and hoping she could make it out of there alive. Every morning I used to watch on TV and watch the Al Jazeera channel, hoping my friend managed to escape since day one of the attack through the north borders. But I couldn't stop watching the news on the TV. There were those crazy scenes when they pull out dead children from under demolished houses. But I was that crazy girl who was fearless and always got called when anyone is injured at home to help out because I have no fear of bloody scenes or anything like that. A few weeks passed like that. I woke up every morning and switched the TV on and watched the dead people, the crimes that the Israelis are doing to the Lebanese. Every time I saw my nephew, I would freak out. I'd picture them covered in blood and cut to pieces. When I saw a knife or a gun or any other sharp object, I would push it or throw it away, fearing that I would use it subconsciously and hurt the kids or myself. I lost it. It seemed like my brain was having a mind of its own. I hid it away from my family and tried to avoid them. I locked myself in my room, avoiding the kids. Fear was eating me. Pictures were jumping into my head. I changed my sleeping habits to avoid my family. I just wanted to be left alone. Whenever I would pass the kitchen, I'd tie my hands around me, fearing that I would touch any sharp object and might hurt someone. And finally, one day, I couldn't bear it. My sister came to my room, and when I started crying and begging her to keep the children away from me and away from my sight, I'm not okay anymore. I need to be away from people and live in my room alone. Of course, she was freaked out. She offered that I should seek a therapist, but that was going to risk my job because I was a teacher. And I refused. She started treating me by reciting some verses from the Quran to make me feel better. It took two years for me until I started to feel better. All I used was praying and seeking treatment through Quran and God. I'm much better now. No more crazy pictures jumping into my thoughts. But still, I can't watch any blood, even in movies or even simple injuries. Now what really comes to my thought whenever I remember what has happened to me is I'm not the person who lost those children in Lebanon. I'm not the person who was close to them when they died. I'm not the person who carried their dead bodies. I'm not the one who buried them, not the one who grieved for years over losing them. Yet I was badly affected by what happened. So what happened to those people who lived it? How do they feel now? How can they just live their whole life with it? I was deeply moved and went nuts, although I was known for being the crazy, emotionless, hard, stone-hearted girl. I'm not a relative to those victims. I'm not the one who touched their dead bodies, yet I couldn't bear it. I don't blame those people if they went crazy and looked for revenge. It would be very hard for them to accept peace or understand it. Everywhere, all over the world, whoever tastes such pain, whether Palestinian, Lebanese, anyone, 
I would fully understand if they seek revenge instead of peace.